Hello and welcome to the Inish Guarda YouTube podcast show powered by citiesabc.com and openbusinesscouncil.org in near future businessabc.net. Once again, we continue profiling global personalities, the founders, the influencers, and the tech geeks and the personalities that are changing our world and coming up with better narratives that can actually make the world a better place and especially that make the world a place where actually we understand where we're going and uh, it gives us a sense of purpose and a sense of vision. And this is actually one of the things that I think is more important than ever, especially with all the layers of technology that are happening around us from artificial intelligence to blockchain to immersive experiences and a lot of different things, especially when it comes to spatial computing and all the areas that I normally have been talking here on this podcast. So I'm particularly excited today to touch um, base with an entrepreneur and personality that is actually doing some very cool stuff and they're going to be showing some image during the interview. Um, so I welcome to our series, Denise Osgur, and uh, I'll start by uh, going through her CV. She's still quite young, but a fantastic entrepreneur and as well with fantastic achievements in a lot of areas. So Denise Osgur is an Istanbul-based entrepreneur, a growth hacker and a specialist in digital marketing technologies. She's the co-founder of Space Runners and uh, she's been having a, play, uh, a, a pivotal role in providing AI and Web3 tools uh, to some of the world leading fashion brands and it's quite impressive the work she's been doing. So the platform Space Runners sponsor, uh, sponsored Balmain's main event at the Paris Fashion Week. Um, there was quite a big benchmark and uh, they've been working with a luxury with luxury brands and this one in particular to launch digital clothing and virtual stores. In 2021, Space Runner created a line of virtual sneakers with NBA players Kyle Kuzma and Nick Young, selling out all 10,000 pairs in nine minutes. And the Space Runners since then has raised $10 million in funding from Axel, Polychain Capital and others. As a partner of Evercopy, Danny simplifies advertisement processes through the amalgamation of deep marketing expertise and cutting edge generative AI on Microsoft Azure in particular. And Dennis plays the role of a mentor at an assembly accelerator, Farfetch, um, and she's been actually having a focus on personalization, digital experiences and the transformative pot potential of Web3 and all the areas of digital twins uh, and NFTs, especially in the areas of business, fashion and all concili conciliary areas. She has a bachelor degree in economics from Bogazisi University, probably didn't spell it right, and a keen interest in technology and innovation. And she's one of the 15 percent of female founders within the tech sector, which is quite impressive. And she was named as well Forbes 30 and the 30 in the list of 2023. So welcome to our series, Denise. Thank you so much for having me. Um, well, it's, it's, it's an honor. Your, your name is almost the, the same as, as mine. It's Denise. Um, so it's, it's it's, it's a pleasure to be here, uh, honored from what you were saying from, from all the intro. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, looking forward for your questions, Dennis. No, it's really impressive. First of all, your age and your achievements, but as well, the, the cutting edge uh, solutions that you, you build uh, your teams around the world and as well, the achievement from Istanbul to the world, which is, I know sometimes Istanbul, although it has some of the best content, uh, oh. you have to be in New York, London and so forth. So you have actually multiple layers from, from uh, gender, yeah, age and location, which is, I, I deeply admire. So uh, mm -hmm. I would like to start, I always start by the basis. Um, so, uh, Tell us a bit about yourself. First of all, how did you become an entrepreneur when you started in technology? It was your parents, it was a teacher, a bit of that background that uh, made who you are today. Uh, yeah, of course. So I have been an entrepreneur for, I think, like more than six years now, um, ever since the university. So I was studying economics and um, the thing about economics is it's close to everything, but it's also far from everything. Uh, so that's kind of just how I got into the Web3 space, exploring the crypto and, and the markets. But I know even back then that that was my niche. Um, so I quickly uh, 
moved to just building a team. Of course, I was on the business side, but I was also like very curious about the coding, how the development software side works actually on the code. So I was also searching uh, a lot uh, and doing something hands-on. But then I was also interested in managing a team, moving with a team, because I believe that's the spirit in today's world in the entrepreneurship space. So I founded um, a small team with, with people that I really trust um, and started experimenting on few projects on Web3. Because even at that time, I think about like seven years ago, almost, um, the space was, of course, like there's lots of good projects out there still in Web3 and same thing for AI as well as of today. Um, the technology is super impressive. Uh, it, it makes you feel stupid when you first hear about it. Um, but the thing is, um, it needs actually more and more connections with the real life implications and use cases so that there is enough space for everyone. So that's, a, that's an exciting for me to, um, to, to, to explore and go for. Uh, I think not only for the you know, past years, but I think throughout my life. Um, so that one thing led, led to another in the Web3 space because it's it was a small space back then, like not many developers or builders, let's say. So I met with my co-founder Juan at the time about four years ago, and then he was working on a Metaverse project and I was working on another Metaverse project that was involving sports and NBA. And then my co-founder was doing something related to LinkedIn version of Metaverse, like it's a professional network in Metaverse. So we kind of work, started working together for... Of course, at that time, the name wasn't Space Runners, but we were working on something and we were super passionate about it. And then um, we kind of just took the first leap on uh, actually about three years ago. And then um, we kind of just came up with this sneaker collection and started and, and kind of saw that as the first step to the metaverse where we gave the collectibles to people first and then they are kind of like our community members or stakeholders um, to, to the metaverse. And then we also collaborated with some of the NBA champions like Kyle Kuzma and Nick Young. And uh, cool. it got exploded. Like it, it was super amazing, um, super excited. Um, so we made our first drop and then uh, one thing followed the other. And, and, and even at that time, I remember that we were seeing a space in the fashion space because as I was mentioning, I think there's a very very good connection between the web3 and and something like fashion or retail in general to connect the technology and see the technology in the real life so that is that thesis is like god thankfully is, is true even today uh and we see we keep kept seeing the interest from the fashion brands and from the gaming companies and we build it space runners uh somewhere in between um still today so that is kind of how things have started. Um, hope that was helpful. No, no, it was amazing, and, and I, I love this this vision and as well the way you take forward. So let let's go a bit of the how did you start from from of course uh, from Istanbul to the world, but as well from from uh, starting a project so ambitious like this and actually having a global footprint. <laughs> yeah, of course. To be honest, I'm, like there, there's many answers to this question. Uh, I do believe, like as a female young entrepreneur from Turkey, I think, of course, like there are labels and there, there are challenges that I I need to break, just like anyone else. But but also seeing like today with the technology, like there's lots of innovation coming from the smallest countries because we've never been this efficient. We have never been this rich in terms of like tools and networks that we do have access today. So as a, I, to be honest, I didn't have those labels in my head from the, from the beginning. I wasn't thinking that I was, a, you know, me being a female or me being from like a person from Turkey would just hinder me from accessing all these things or achieving all these things. And um, I, I, I think it's, it's, it's in, in people's head right now, which is, which is like the good thing is it's it's being exceeded right now. Like people are not, you know, like the the, the most successful entrepreneurs in US, they're Indian, for example, like or the CEOs, like majority is Indian. So I don't think these labels do make so much impact or too much sense in people's minds, think thanks to technology, honestly. 
And that was the same for me too. Uh, if, if one thing uh, that was all about giving me advantage of achieving stuff because people, the shocking effect in, you know, in, in people's faces, I think that was the thing that gave me, adv- uh, gave me advantage even. Um, and, and soon enough, I was just losing all the labels uh, with the achievements because once you break them, you're actually becoming independent from the, the, the homeland that you were, you were born and raised. Like I was just traveling around. I've been in, like I, me and my co-founders, we're, like we are traveling a lot, being in London, being in US, like according, based on our meetings and based on the strategic positioning. Um, and I'm, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm a global citizen right, right now is what I'm saying, I guess. I guess. No, uh, this is impressive, and I love that you are killing the barriers as well, even on your psychology. But in fact, the barriers still exist. I see that from from a lot of the uh, people I speak. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it depends a lot of the age of the the mindset. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm 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 very happy that you you're very straightforward on that. So let let's go right now in terms of how did you start uh, building something as as cutting edge as this Rainers? And as well, like you said, from economy to technology, Web3, blockchain, but mm-hmm. as well, a lot of immersive and as well bridges between uh, everything that is coming into the different areas. Yeah, yeah, of course. So I kind of mentioned how the things have started with Space Runners. We have came up with the NFT collection, thought that doing something in fashion would be cool because that would be an excellent connection. Because in our heads and as we proved with our networks, Gaming companies were looking for a connection to, to, to you know, like with, with the real life brands, especially with the retail companies and to access the Gen Z, like all this stuff. And it was a operational task in their head to come up with all the wearables. So they were like more than willing to collaborate with the real life fashion brands. While this side, the fashion brands in the real life, especially the luxury ones, seem a little bit of a challenge in the beginning. But then as they... As we started exploring them, as we approached them, and as we gained their trust as, as a startup, as a smaller startup, they actually have shown an excessive interest and, and, and will to move forward with the innovation because they were just, they, they, this is what they're discussing in their leadership. Like, honestly, what are they doing in the AI or in the Web3 space is the main topic. So they're actually like more than willing to work with companies that they actually trust and can do something together. But the thing is, of course, they don't want to lose the quality side of things, which is uh, which needs a bit of, you know, a professional approach uh, with, 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 you know, like maybe it's, it's a slower approach than most startups would do. So we were, I guess we were uh, careful enough and, 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 um, quality obsessed enough uh, while approaching to these brands and they were uh, they were accepting us so we have done this NFT collection of course that gained interest and then started working with fashion brands starting talking to them and then we raised the funding from Axel from Pantera from Polychain and, and Jump Capital alongside with many angel, angel investors who are still helping and supporting um, and then in a short time we started working with Balman as our first Know, like bigger like top luxury brand and then we've done a, a collaboration with them where we attached a digital collectible into their physical shoe and it got sold on the website on their website so actually they actually plug the crypto payment and crypto nft infrastructure into their like existing website which was a huge step um for for a luxury brand and then uh that was quite successful and that that was the first step and then they came to us again, like two months ago, and they were wishing to do something with the AI this time. So um, about two months ago in their uh, Orlando shop, um, we actually brought the AI experience and, and people actually designed their sneakers with AI. That was that was quite cool. And then there was another designing this designer uh, putting the design on the real sneaker, which was which was a which was a first in the fashion space. So you see, like there's lots of opportunities and interest in the fashion space, but um, when the innovation comes, I mean, they just need the right tools to use the innovation uh, is, I believe is the right thing to say. And right after the Balmain, there was many other brands. Of course, we started talking with Smiley and brought their IP to the Web3 space and started collaborating with like Web3 projects and AI projects to actually scale their IP 
um, but but of course while protecting that as well. So that that was another thing that um, um, that kept us kept us busy in the last year. Um, so then there there was Amazon. Like there was lots of collaboration that kept the team going. And then as we move forward, depending, I mean, based on the market expectations and based on the, the, the partner expectations that we, we had, we've come up with the AI fashion design tool to basically enable people to design their variables in the, not for the NFTs only, but also for the physical items. Um, so now it's been used in the games, it's been used in the metaverses, and it's, it's used by um, brands like Balmain in their physical stores. Well, first of all, congratulations. This is some of the biggest brands in the planet. And, and I love uh, that you, and that's, that's the reason why I found this, I wanted to interview, is that you are combining all the different things. And most of these technologies are still, of course, most of them quite new, uh, quite complex as well. Most of the people get lost. And, and what you just described is super impressive, but most of the people don't, don't even understand it. So me and you, we can talk about this for hours. Well, let's go a bit more detail. So can you... For people that don't understand, let's say someone that is in fashion, they want to understand how they can use what you just described, for instance, contextualize, for instance, how you use AI and describe, mm -hmm. for instance, a bit, not too technical, but you can go a bit more technical. My audience is quite technical, oh. but I would like to touch that and how you bring that to a start. So the process, I'm talking more about the process and, and the, the technical process. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So the AI fashion design tool is a new concept and it's not, it's not new because people were people in the fashion space from the NFT times, they were always obsessed about the personalization aspect. So they wanted their customers, even the luxury brands, to enable their users to write their names on it or put some themes on the, on, on the products to make it even more special. Because if you personalize something, you're actually becoming a co-creator with the brand. It makes you actually inside their walls like you're not purchasing something as an outsider but you're actually creating with them and they do have all the resources to work with designers and like you know world-class designers sneaker designers to actually make your dream in a much better way like it, to realize your dream in a much better way so you're actually you end up you know being proud of yourself and and being more, even more attached to that brand um so that was one aspect that I believe that many brands are exploring today, like H&M, um, I think uh, Tommy, like many fashion brands are putting the personalization, Nike by Me has been out there for some time. Um, and all they do is actually like changing the colors or adding some labels or some some things on the on the physical product to make it even more special. So with AI, the only difference is um, to enable everyone to actually design stuff in a beautiful way. So even if you're not a designer, I mean, normally when you see a pop up, you know, like letting people to design stuff, you are you may be afraid because what you are going to create will just cost you extra money of course but of course if you're if you're not a designer you may end up just not doing a good thing so with ai all you have to do is on the store from from the store to, to to the online experience all you have to do is just write some stuff and we do have some styles and we have trained our ai to for, just for the fashion design and specific to that brand's aesthetics so if you choose, for example, like Balmain or Smiley, you'll be seeing their styles and that, you know, the, you know, like for, for example, Balmain has this Renaissance style that they, they love to use for, for years, which looks amazingly beautiful. So if you want to just keep their design, design and create something with it, you can do that with the, with the AI. And of course, you can choose any other style, um, graffiti, or any other style, like it, it totally depends on you, but it will happen. Uh, and it's just possible with just, you know, like writing some prompts. Um, now we are releasing something similar for, uh, for, the, for another purpose, uh, for people to actually create their merchandise for, to, to remember stuff. So let's say, for example, you have family members and you have memories and all the photos that you want to turn into a merch. Uh, what we are currently working on is to enable you, to allow you to just um, you know, create an AI art and put it on a t-shirt and just um, have all the memories within that merchandise. Um, so there, there are many use cases is what I'm saying, um, but we also see the interest is high um, because, you know, brands on one side, they are investing on the personalization and the consumers, especially the new generation, 
um, they're super interested to having something unique. Um, so I think everyone kind of uh, loves the idea already. No, that's uh, that, and this is just like you said at the beginning. Uh, this, the case studies are increasing, and there's more and more interesting things. So uh, one thing I want to touch you: you are a serial entrepreneur, even quite young. So tell us a bit about your team. You have a fantastic global team, a co-founder as well that is quite uh, uh, as well uh, uh, with a lot of achievements. But it's quite a global team. So a bit how, how you coordinate all these different things because I think it's important for people listening to us. That's always a fantastic teamwork. And even Leonardo da Vinci had a lot of team. If you read his bios, he had a team with him. So tell us a bit about how you build your teams and how you coordinate this, and as well how you build this international footprint. Because one thing that uh, that is impressive with you guys is the the multiplicity of case studies, and as well how you push the different technologies together. Uh, great question. Like honestly, for me, of course, everyone can be different. Entrepreneur entrepreneurship journey is super subjective. Is one thing that I've learned throughout the journey. Everybody's um, they have their own uh, approaches that they feel comfortable with. For me, um, the journey that I find successful is to walk with people that you actually trust. Um, trust their ownership. Trust their um, creativity, minds, um, their persistence, like all these things. And I was lucky enough to, from my co-founder to, to my teammates, um, they are actually like super, super responsible and super creative people that I've always enjoyed working together. And um, entrepreneurship, if you are just starting, of course, this is about, this is about ups and downs. And it's always about, you know, the high moments and celebrations. And it's, you know, like opening the company or raising funding, like all these things that are the hype moments. And then um, there are also calm moments that, you know, like it's, it's, it's just you and in, in your computer working on the, on the nighttime. Um, but as you actually, you know, if you devote yourself to a, to a company and if, if you achieve stuff and, and, and you shortly realize that this is a long journey, a marathon, uh, that that just means more than those achievements or little moments. It's really about like um, working closely with, the, with, with people, like trusting them, like meeting these people, just traveling somewhere just to meet them in person, just to see them in person uh, or just organizing some stuff you know, like events for the team building, like all these things. Of course, it's not, it's, it was my first time building and working with the, with, with an international team. My co-founder was, was a little more lucky here because he was from McKinsey. So he was always like working with international people. But for me, uh, I of course had this struggling time because of the time differences or because of the cultural differences to work with people and understanding them. But short enough, I think, that just pushes you to be more inclusive and just try to be, you know, like, you know, have more empathy over, over things because everybody has their own conditions and like, you know, like beyond their cultures, they're actually in the different states of their lives. Like one being married, one having a baby, like, you know, all these things. And uh, as a leader, I, I believe you just need to trust them uh, as, as a foundation and, uh, I, I mean, for me, I was just super, super lucky to have this team. Um, we do have, because we are doing Web3 and fashion, we do have designers, we do have developers. So our, our team is fairly structured and creative, um, which is hard to manage at some points because like they don't speak the same language at some times. But I think we do have an excellent balance um, and a matured culture within the team. Um, so right now we are about 40, 45 people, I believe. Um, but yeah, that's all. No, that's impressive. And, uh, and I love the way you, you approach things so practical and so focused. So um, one of the, the things you guys are doing is really combining all the areas of metaverse with all these immersive technologies. We mentioned Web3, blockchain, and a lot of different things. So um, there's a lot of uh, different journeys about metaverse. I wrote a lot about it and that's in a lot of this podcast, we had actually some some of the top people in the world in these areas. But uh, one of the things that I'm interested to see, because you are very practical on this, um, and you are actually building what we define as metaverse. So how do you see, especially in your generation as well, um, do you see this? Because there's a lot of different journeys you can have, especially right now, as we are in the crossover where Apple is coming to the game. 
Um, okay. And uh, of course, even the definition of metaverse is very broader. So how do you define and how do you see this, especially from uh, the theory and the practice? Mm -hmm. well, that's a great question. So. Um... Obviously, I can get the. I mean, I, I I trust Web three as a as an economic foundation because I think that lays the perfect ground for um you know like um solving or or structuring all the you know monetization issues with the gaming and with the metaverse. So I think that's a great ground, but I think there is also a misunderstanding of putting everything on the blockchain, like forcing everything to be on blockchain, which is quite inefficient in terms of. And all the fees and all the times that is required to have um have the have the operations so technically i don't think that's uh that was a um good approach uh that many projects have adopted years ago uh, like two years ago and uh, i think there are two separate things blockchain is a part of it of course we do uh, need um uh, traditional gaming companies who are huge to enter the space and you know like um, help help people build the the, the gaming in infrastructure while the Web three people just provide the the, the economic uh, infrastructure. On one side, I know of course the bigger hardware companies are also getting to this space. I do believe for the metaverse to come real, and I I I'm a person that are that, that is super optimistic about it because the new generation is living in the virtual space so i know that this is, will eventually happen and looking at the brand side of things as well like i know how passionate they are to exist in the metaverse and engage in metaverse so i'm, I'm super optimistic that 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 will eventually happen but i do believe that there are um, two fundamental issues that needs to be solved in order for the for for everyone to fully adopt um first thing is of course about the internet uh, the, the the online connection capability because from country to country the speed and the connectivity just changes and that will affect everything i mean if you want to live there possibly like everyone needs to have that very like smooth access to the internet so that's number one um and of course saying that is easy but um i think that's like super super expensive uh for the telecom companies to achieve that in the in the short term so that's number one number two is about the hardware so the, the the choices that we had so far, I think they were quite uh, far from what people were expecting. Like when you wear VR glass, for example, for more than like 50, 20 minutes, it just hurts. And I don't think that's feasible for people to live in metaverse. Um, so I'm kind of just eager to experience Apple's uh, glasses as well, which will come out, I, I think, in in less than a month so let's see about that but of course that's still a huge glass that is questionable if that's you know like working with it i'm not sure like let's see but um i mean of course i i do i i'm i'm, a, I'm an apple fan so probably that will be um much better than what we already have um but let's see i i i do think like these two things needs to be sold in order for the you know the metaverse game uh metaverse culture in in general uh, to be fully adopted yeah uh, it's very good point and, and of course the narrative is created by people like us and, and especially you doing a lot of work on that so so let's talk about some of the things that you you've been doing especially when it comes to uh the major solutions that you build so from the things that you've been doing for instance from the spaces and the things that we have within um your website and uh, i I will ask the team to put all these images here. So you have, for instance, at the moment, uh, if I go to your platform, you have the Spaceverse, and you have a lot of things where you can actually have already interactive experiences. And especially one of the things you've been doing is always pushing the boundaries between all these technologies and the use cases on fashion that we spoke so far. So from this perspective of the, the fashion, and uh, for instance, I have a daughter of 10 years old, and she's always my reference model for this, is that she she's actually playing with her Roblox, and she has her digital clothes, she has her fashion profile, she even has the games where she gets as the fashion model. So in the end of the day, right now, there's almost two worlds that go in parallel. There's the world of, of the physical, my clothes and your clothes and so forth, and then there's the virtual part. And at the moment, there's a bridge, depends on your age, that everyone is already interacting with the digital twin, let's put it that way. So how do you see this when it comes to fashion 
and other iterations because you you're doing a lot of different things because this because at the moment there's already a multi-billion dollars business of people just buying virtual goods and you mentioned the nfts but i'm talking virtual goods of clothes that people buy for their avatars or people buy because they're doing some kind of promotions online so Mm -hmm. Do you see this going in a direction where these two worlds work together or are you going to have a divorce at a certain point where actually our digital twin becomes actually, um, and that is probably one of the visions of the metaverse, becomes the becomes actually the biggest asset or one of the biggest assets. I want to just touch how do you visualize this because of course everything is happening as we speak uh, and we cannot even talk in the future, this is happening now. Uh, but I want to touch this because a lot of people get very confused and have been having the most crazy perceptions uh when i speak with the uh, even high profile personalities even from music industry and so forth that oh my god no no i don't want this or then go completely in like us but i just would like to see how do you perceive this it's a big question but just some notes how do you've been seeing because i'm sure you have a lot of experience from people coming not just the geeks but i like to see the experience with the non-geeks the geeks are with us <laughs> Did the wearable market in the gaming space, that's already a billion dollar market and people seem to really enjoy actually like I, I from from the last data that I have from from two months ago, I think 80% of the players today are changing their clothes at least five times per week. So that's, that's a lot. So they are actually like they are getting bored of, of how they look and they actually like upgrade their stuff to perform better in the virtual environment so I think it's it's a matter of like how you define the wearables in the virtual space and in the physical state I'm a person that believes that um, virtual space needs support from the physical uh, world in order to just grow um, just like I was saying for the web3 like it has to be some kind of functionality or some some connection with the real world but of course, I don't think that every everything that we have on the real world should have digital twins. Like that's not functional, and that's not that's the, there is no reason to. But um, I think the good thing is the brands and the individuals they're they're actually like super super curious to just explore how they will work. So that's enough interest. Is 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 the point in my opinion. Like they don't have to fully just turn all the items into the I mean that's not efficient. That's not for web three. It's not like technically supported from from from, from the infrastructure perspective. While on the other side to your question, I think they will just keep coexisting um, because the, the 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 definition of the virtual wearables um, that that is used by, you know, the, the that is f from a gamer perspective, that is more about a wearable. That's just an identity that just um, helps them express themselves, help, helps, helps them to exist in the virtual space, helps, helps, helps them to identify each other or, or to, 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 you know, help them to, to perform better in the, in the virtual spaces or having just, just like in the real world, like having some kind of privilege to access, you know, stuff or just, level up or, or you know the, the same thing so the more time that they're spending in the virtual space of course they will invest in that more because they don't really care about the real stuff which is going to eventually like we will be wearing these stuff like more than more than like five years like you know like at max um and even that is too much um so that that just loses the, the meaning in the real real life it's just the same thing and it's kind of like getting repetitive in the fashion world so people are looking for some different some more authentic things and um i mean honestly virtual space is giving them everything in that sense so especially with the ai now like they're able to create their own stuff and 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 just you know like from the not just the 2d design but also the 3d design so they can create the wings and everything like you know like the fire coming under like all these things which is super interesting and if the VR and AR technology goes well together, like we will see them actually touching the real life in different ways. Um, I think people are just hungry for, for such stuff, like interesting, authentic stuff. Uh, so they will be chasing after that. I think, of course, two worlds will coexist, but not in like fully 100% existing way, but they will have small connections um, because we still have, of course, we do have young generations, but we also have... Um, you know, people from the older generation that will need to adopt um, one way or another. I think they are starting to understand, um, but I don't think they're 
there yet so they will need more use cases and more like solid things in their way um because i do i do see that they're also interested to, to explore the digital space but um they care about the functionality more because of the conditions that they were raised um so it will take some time so there is, I mean, if young generation wants to achieve things, if we want to develop projects that are touching on two worlds and touching on everyone, we need to think about, you know, if that's interesting for the young generation and if that's functional for the older generation for the real world. Um, we need to achieve both. Um, so yeah, that's a challenge that we need to work on. And as well on that part, there's as well the digital divide because you are, of course, uh super advanced at me here on this this kind of tools and and what you're doing but there's a huge challenge as well in perceive even if everyone has a mobile device that is partly doing that even the most basic smartphone is already doing a huge part of what we would speak here but most of people don't understand the layers and consequences so one of the things that is key for your work is the personalization uh, what you guys have been doing with Balmain. Uh, recently, you had actually a, a very interesting interview with Jeff Wilser, talking precisely about the AI impact on advertisement and the importance of personalization, and especially how we bring these things which you touch right now. So I would like to, to go more in the sense of, so uh, big brands have massive budgets, and for instance, we have right now print on demand. We have a lot of different things that are touching the fashion industry and all the different industries. But still, there's still a lot of challenge from sustainability to uh, digital divide to different parts. So how do you see the personalization when it comes to AI and, and as well in terms of these technologies and in terms of fashion? Um, great question. So uh, I, in my head, like there are two uh, sides, one being positive, of course, like I think AI is the um, engine for the scale personalization like everyone um not only the designers can design their stuff without without needing anyone is the key and that makes you co-creator so i would say with ai people will just approach brands and it's going to be a um i don't know uh approaching concept like we will not see brands as like cold brands but also like brands that we can just work together in a way that we you know we create the final product with i think that um that is only possible with ai and uh, we do see already see some implications of that with the brands that we are collaborating so um and and actually that wasn't their first attempt like with web3 and nfts they actually um willingly started just breaking that glass and approaching to people and their final consumers as well as the geeks and the Gen Z, uh, which was an you know unknown territory for most of the luxury brands, but right now they're closer to them with the NFTs and everything. But right now with the AI, it's it's just an, another you know page that they were talking for 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 years now. The personalization aspect truly becoming to life. So that's the good part. But of course, on the bad side, these brands are are a brand for, for some reason, right? Like they do have their brand legacy logos and styles and designs that they kept feeding for years and years. So they kind of want to protect that as well. So that has to be a nice balance um, because also from the legal perspective, like there's an IP problem that keeps going on with the AI and everybody seems to discuss this for now, but there is no real solution. Uh, so usually what happens is uh, on-demand printing companies just leaves the responsibility on the consumer side. Like if you do anything, we don't, you know, we don't take any responsibility, and you, 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 you will deal with the IP stuff. But that's not the case with 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 the brands. Like they want to know if the prompts that people will enter there was, is going to be appropriate. Like it's, there's no swear words, there's there's no logos, there's nothing. So it's 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 good there. So we, as a foundation, we have to include that on our AI tool and making sure that there is no legal things that will go on and we will secure both sides. Um, but of course, there's, there are ways to exceed that and, and, and you know, like break that in, in many ways. And we are still working on this. Um, but I, I, I would say that problem will be solved uh, short enough. Um, soon enough so uh yeah there are two sides i i mean eventually i do think there's a new page opening for the fashion world uh from the one-sided journey to two-sided 
um, you know, design journey or co-creation journey for consumers and brands, both in physical and, and digital world. Yeah, I'm into that and we really need it because it's it's a very important part and I love how you go deep on that because there's the legal considerations, there's the privacy considerations, the data and so forth. So I'm conscious of the time and I want to be respectful of your time. So uh, one of the things that you, you, you created a new company as well recently that is the um, that is actually going in one new direction as well so i would like to touch for you to tell us about uh, uh, of course you're more famous for space runners but the ever copy and the ever copy is quite interesting what you guys are doing as well yeah, yeah of course so it was a, a connected story with space runners so obviously with space runners it's been three years and we were always like working with marketing agencies and marketing teams and um, marketing has always been a huge part of our business and space runners from, from the smaller times to the bigger times. And uh, as we work with many brands and I, I knew I was following AI and its capabilities to, to achieve stuff that we were struggling. And of course, among the journey, I was just meeting with lots of founders and lots of entrepreneurs and startups too, um, that has the exact same problem. Like they were just dealing with marketing and promotion. Uh, but that seemed a little elusive <laughs> for the for the bigger companies, exclusive for the bigger companies. If you want to achieve like good marketing, you need to have a budget and you need to have a team process, etc. And uh, many of the founders and startups they were like super super R and D intensive or like technically intensive, so they were lacking all these abilities. And I actually remember from my first year years almost in entrepreneurship, like when I was trying to build stuff. Um, and today, like, honestly, entrepreneurship actually became a job title almost like there's lots of people building stuff and, and now around the world, as I was saying in the beginning, like whether they're female, male from inner, in any company, from any culture, they, they are actually building stuff because everything is more accessible. Um, and, um, and even from the time that I've started Space Runners to today, like the competition level has just crazy i mean it's just crazy to see how it's just increasing every day like there's one idea and then you know there are 10 more projects working on the same idea every day so it's it's just getting the i mean the space is getting more and more um hard to stand out to achieve stuff so every copy was just built on that idea uh we were saying okay like we were we are building all these things but the marketing is not our mission it's never going to be because it's super super dynamic and um you know like until we can work with marketing agencies or a big marketing team that is a that is going to be a challenge and and even for the bigger companies um with big teams like they still need more efficiency so why don't we have you know like an ai tool not just to craft the marketing materials or the text materials for us but just do the you know the end-to-end -end thing under 30 seconds so that's the goal with every copy to help non-marketer founders um or non-marketers in general to automate marketing under 30 seconds uh it does from the planning so it takes any company update let's say you're raising funding or you're just launching a product so it takes that and then turns it into a marketing strategy, like weeks of planning, and then creates activities in the multimedia formats uh, for, for paid and organic channels. And then it just starts executing. So it's it's just like your rent growing itself, kind of. Oh, congratulations. It's really uh, and it, a fantastic tool. It's more and more necessary. And, and as well, just to put it working, it's a it's a quite an interesting thing because of course as as we have more and more automated, we have as well more and more fragmentation of technologies, and that's a big challenge to say less for everyone. Um, so, in the conscious of time, and the, you guys have amazing things that you achieve personally. So, as someone quite young um, and full of energy and passion for the world, I admire that a lot. So, what would be one of the things that, you, as an entrepreneur and as as well a creator, because you you are creating a lot of different things, that you would uh, share with the audience listening to us, especially younger people or people probably your age or even older that that try to be young in the sense of creativity that you have and maturity of building fantastic achievements. Thank you for all the nice words. I think everyone's journey is quite different and uh, it's really worth to explore, even if you fail at the end. Um, so for the, you know, for the new ventures that I am after today, like it's, it's, it's just 
it's just like starting from zero to be like super honest it's world everything is changing uh i do think as an entrepreneur it's um everyone says says that it's a like super hard journey it's, it's full of challenges and of course it is but uh i would say closing yourself uh from the external world and just focusing on building something that is useful is the key um to for to, to you know to, to be successful because uh, we are exposed to really just, I mean, too many things from social media, from our competitors. So just close your ears for uh, throughout your building journey and focus on what you do. Like put your hands that, heads down and, and um, don't even like talk about what you're building until you build and, and, and sell, start selling and see the product market fit. Um, but until that time, I would I would say I would strongly recommend everyone to keep their dreams and ideas and products to themselves and um, just control their ego um, because that's you know that that's what makes many entrepreneurs fail uh, from what I'm saying. And of course, there is always this 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 thing like even if you succeed on so many things, um, it's just um, don't really just go after the success like you know that people always say that I, I know that is easy to say but um we I think from the education life that we have gone through that that was always about like you know getting high grades or I don't know like getting approval from your teacher like those kind of things but in real life I I, I see you know huge tendency for people to to, to look after the same thing uh, to go after the same thing like you know people praising them on the LinkedIn like all these things but um, that's not how things should work. Uh, honestly, that's just an illusion. Um, so I would, yeah, I would strongly recommend them to just, you know, focus on what they do without telling anyone and expecting any praising for a long, long time. Very wise words. <laughs> and not more to say. Well done. <laughs> Very impressive. And I think that what you touched about the ego is, is key. So one last one about space runners in the future, because you guys are really doing very cutting edge stuff. Um, so what are it because you, you are doing from like you mentioned and uh, the people that we we'll put during the conversation, there's a lot of uh, videos. So you've been mostly focused on the digital collectives, the space first and the Ablo AI. Yeah. Where would be the 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 next steps or like a big thing that okay not not uh, don't need to announce anything but just some of the things especially in terms of product that you you are concentrated right now because AI of course this is right now on the explosion 2022 20, 23 24 will be the big explosion and of course you are one of the first organizations bringing AI to 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 fashion to a lot of different industries and you mentioned as well marketing so a bit of uh, the future. Yeah. Um, so um, in the next year, I, I, I just shortly mentioned, I, I, I guess, with Ablo, we serve Ablo as, as, as a tool for others currently. I mean, so far. So the plan is uh, to actually create a store where people design their stuff for a physical and, and, and digital environment and just plug their environment. Like if that's physical, like just print it. And if that's if that's digital, just plug it into any games that you're already playing as an NFT or as a non-NFT. Uh, so that's going to be available, I think, in the next two months um, with with Ablo. Um, and then, of course, there's there's many aspects. So starting from that, we actually want people to create their like anything, like you know any any product basically by using AI. Hopefully, of course, in the fashion space. Um, but in, in different, very creative ways. Uh, and again, I going back to the beginning, I think there is, um, we all we always just put the, the physical aspect into things. So uh, expect that to connect in, um, connect to, to, to the digital and the, to, the, to the physical um, space in, in different ways, in creative ways. Um, the last thing is of course, um, as we are also connected to the gaming space, everything that is created through Alba will be uh, represented with your AI model. So your face and your look as an AI model for the for the social media and for the for the virtual space, your wearable will be available on that, and you'll be seeing your like digital version as created with AI. Um, and yeah, I think you'll be good to go for both worlds. 
Well, impressive. And uh, it's been an honor. Actually, I'm quite impressed with your maturity and as well with the wisdom. So uh, it's been as well. Congratulations for the fantastic achievements. For people listening to us, please uh, look at the social media profiles. They're all listed here. But as well, engage because, like you said, it's more important is to focus on your passion and get it done and, uh, and go on and push it forward. So uh, wonderful to have you here and very grateful. Okay, thank you. And wish you oh much God. more success. Thank you so much for having me and great to talk with you. Thank you so much. Thank you.